Hey guys, it's Bella here, and today I will show you how to be a god at Rainbow Six Siege. Tomorrow you will be able to 1v5 CTM easy peasy. Alright, maybe in two years or so. Okay, so there's a lot of new players to the game, and I just want to make this kind of video to help you guys out there. If you are not a beginner at this game, this guide could still help you. I will show you the six most important things, in my opinion, in this video. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna talk about is the map awareness. The map awareness is something very important in every FPS, but especially Rainbow Six. In Rainbow Six, you need to take attention to every sound you can hear, and you need to take attention at everything you can see. So let's take Chalet for example. Okay, so let's say you are spawning in this location right there, and you want to attack a kitchen or trophy room. This window right there will be open a lot of time. And it could mean that someone is spawn killing there, so you always need to be careful about that window, that specific window. You can't just walk there and don't look at the window, because most of the time you will get killed like that. This window could also mean there is a Volcam outside. So if you don't see any spawn killers in this window, and you want to push a site, well, you need to take a look around, because there might be a Volcam in the trees outside. I'm just letting you know, a lot of the time the Volcam is going to be in, the, in these trees right there, or in this tree right there. So, when you push, you always need to be careful. And if you don't find a Volcam, well, you still need to be careful, because it might just be that you didn't see it, so they might run out on you later in the round. So this is a good example of map awareness. You always need to take a look around you. Even if it's late in the round, they could still run out on you, so you always need to be careful. And this is what map awareness is all about. Let's now talk about the communication and the teamwork. The communication is something very important in this game, and as an example, I will show you this clip right there that I did with Serenity 17. I know that some of you already saw it, but it's a very good clip. Two. Two. I got both. Nice. I got both. Holy shit. Okay, okay. Don't worry about this hallway, I'll let you know. Okay. Don't peek cargo. No, I'm cargo. not. Fuck. Time, Fuck. You got this, Python. I'm watching the corridor. There is one. There is one from the corridor. Is he pushing? You know if you want to peek. He's in the middle. No, he's pushing slowly. He's in the nook left side. You know what I'm talking about? He's droning? Yeah, I know. They're both droning. Blackberry's pushing. Blackberry's pushing. Yeah, I saw him. They're gonna push me at the same time. Yep. Hallway is hallway behind you. Cargo is cargo, okay? If he goes in, I'm just gonna see for him. You understand the callouts? Yeah. Okay. He's still there. Hallway is far away. He's down. Hallway pushing, pushing, hallway, hallway. Nice. There you go. <laughs> yes. Nice call outs, man. Holy no problem, shit. No so as you saw in the clip, Serenity was giving me a lot of quick, uh, quick calls. And I didn't even have to peek the hallway. He was always telling me where he was. So these kind of call outs, this, this kind of communication is very important. Because I wouldn't have clutched that, I think, if he wasn't giving me these kind of call outs. That was godlike from him, and when you have a good teamwork like that, it's very easy to win some rounds. The more callouts you make, the more the more rounds you're gonna win, and that's a fact. So the communication, like I said, is very important in this game. And if you are new and you are solo queuing, by uh, for example, having a mic is really helpful for your team because a lot of time. When I solo queue, I don't hear a sound. No one is talking, and it's very hard to win a game when no one is giving some callouts. So yeah, just just buy a mic and do some callouts, boys. Okay, the third thing that I want to talk about is when you are droning. So, for example, let's just pretend that we are in the droning phase when they are reinforcing their things and all that stuff. Okay. The first thing that you want to know is you don't want to get your drone kill right at the beginning. So don't just go in the side 
and scan people right away. This is useless. This is completely useless. Your drone is gonna get killed. Yeah, of course you're gonna do like 50 points, but points are not useful for anything. It's just some points. So, you don't want to get your drone kill. And you want to get as much information as possible. So, a good thing for that is staying with your drone outside the building, but very close to uh, outside the doors. So, for example, let's take this door. You can just put your drone very close to the door, and you can just observe inside what's happening. So, if there's someone crossing bar, you will see him. If there's someone going downstairs, you will see him. And same thing if there's someone going upstairs. And if you see someone going upstairs, for example, you need to tell your team. And this is what I mean by communication that I was talking about like uh, 30 seconds ago. You need to, communi to communicate everything you see. Okay, so let's say that the, the run is starting and you're at your spawn. The first thing that I do when I spawn is I get back instantly on my drone. I, can, I, I get back the fastest as I can, so I can see if there's someone roaming. And if there's someone roaming, example, I see him going upstairs, well, it's very important to lock this guy down, because he's gonna stay upstairs, and he, he doesn't know that you saw him, so... You just lock him down, you just kill him first, and it's a, basically a free kill most of the time, because he's gonna stay there. Another very important thing when you drone in the droning phase, is to not drone at the same place as your teammates. So the thing you can do is just tell your teammates where you're droning and tell them where to drone. Because if you all drone the same place, it, it's useless. You're not gonna be able to see where they are roaming if they have some roamers. So having someone with a drone on every door outside is really good to uh, spot these roamers, to lock them down. And if you spot a roamer, at the start of the round, you can have someone on a drone and someone following the drone to uh, kill the roamer. It's pretty simple. Let's now talk about when to be ab aggressive and when to be passive. A lot of the time, people go very aggressive even though they don't have to do that. They could just be passive and wait inside, but they're not doing it. For, for an example, I will show you this clip. I was being aggressive but passive at the same time. As you can see, we opened the hatch. This is, an, this is an aggressive play right there. Because we make them look at us, but we were not peeking, so this is a passive play at the same time. As you can see, I was just waiting for someone to peek me, because everyone is playing aggressive in this game. A lot of people are doing that, so as you can see, I just got a free kill. And then I went very aggressive because they were starting to push the site and I had a call out. So I just jumped down and I got two, two kills pretty easily because they were gonna push. So they didn't expect me to drop like that. And me, me dying there was not bad at all because I just got 3 kills before so it was completely worth. We just won the round because of that and because of the good callouts of my teammates. So a good moment to play passively is when you have more players than the other team. So example it's a 5v3 for you or a 5v2. There's no reason to peek, there's no, no reason to rush these skills. Like, I know for some people, the kid is important, but sometimes you're just gonna troll around like that for no reasons, because you didn't have to peek, but you did it. And a good uh, moment to play very aggressively is, for example, when you are roaming in any maps and you have a call out that they are pushing the site and you know that there is no one close to you, now it's a good moment to play aggressive and go in their back and shoot them. You just kill them all, easy peasy. It's not it's not a bad thing if you die and you kill like two or three people. It's actually really very good because you're still gonna be ahead in number. So your team is still gonna be in the lead. So you did your job. And most of the time that will result in a free round for you and your team. Okay, so now let's talk about the most important thing in Rumble Six Siege. And it is the map knowledge. If you don't have a good map knowledge in this game, you're not gonna exceed in it. And it's like every game. If you don't know the maps well, you're not, gonna, you're not gonna do good on them. If you know them well, you're gonna do good. And I will explain you why later, like in 30 seconds. I'm just gonna show you how to have a better map knowledge before. Okay, so now I'm gonna give you a little tip on how to uh, 
get a better map knowledge. So the only thing you have to do is you go in matchmaking preference, preferences under gameplay and uh, options. You go there and then you scroll down a bit. Under terrorist hunt, you're gonna see map preferences. So for example, you want to uh, have a good map knowledge in Chalet. I don't know why I'm taking Chalet every time, I just love this map. You put that to on and you put every other map to off. By the way, I forgot to tell you to only put extract hostage at on. Because when you're gonna be done killing uh, every terrorist in the map, you're gonna have an infinite amount of time to play on the map. So if you want to spend an hour on the map, it's fine. It's You, you can do it. But only if you have uh, extract hostage at on. You can have protect too. Yeah, you can. But you're gonna be at defense instead of offense. That's the only thing. And then the only thing you have to do is to you go into terrorist hunt. You select Lone Wolf and you uh, choose your difficulty. But if you just go for normal, it's pretty easy to take them to take them out pretty fast. And then you're gonna have an infinite amount of time to plan the map and to learn the map. So now I'm just gonna get in the map chalet and I'll come back to you. Okay, so I'm in the map chalet now. And now it's time to tell you why the map knowledge is very good. Well, first of all, your aim placement will be much better. So you're not going to be aiming at uh, feet level every time. By the way, aiming at feet level is uh, very bad because this is a one-shot headshot game. So if you're aiming at head level at any time, you're going to get a lot of more kills like that. That if you're aiming at uh, feet level because you're not sure of what you're doing. So, for example, if you're uh, pushing garage, if the site is garage, you know there's a door behind this wall. So, oh, you can just aim at a level and quick peek. And you can even pre-fire. Because another thing, another good thing that the, the map knowledge can bring you is you're gonna know where the enemies could be playing. If you have a lot of experience in the map chalet, you're gonna know for sure that someone might be playing in this room, the blue room, because this is a common spot for uh, someone defending garage. So if you go down these stairs and you want to push from main lobby, you know there might be someone just speaking with his head looking at the stairs, so you can just pre-fire him. You can just pre-fire him at level. And if you aim for the head, he's dead. It's an instant kill, one shot at shot. Also, if you have a good uh, map knowledge, your movements are gonna be a lot more fluid. You're gonna move very fluidly through the map as you progress. And you will be able to pre-aim every corner at a level. Because knowing where the enemies could be is like one of the most important thing in this game. Because if you are out of drones, well, you need your uh, knowledge to navigate through the map without having any problems. And this is why the map knowledge is very important in this game. Okay, let's talk about one last thing, and it's the recall management. So, in Rainbow Six Siege, the recall management is important, but not that important. You can still be a good player if you don't have the best aim in the world. You can still do good, but if you have a good recall management, well, it's good for you, because you're gonna be an extremely good player if you have like a good map knowledge, you, you have a good communication, good map awareness, you're gonna be a complete player. So if you want to practice your aim, you just have to take any walls in any maps. And uh, let's just take an example with the gun of Ash. Okay, so I just went on a better wall to uh, show you the recall of Ash. Okay, so let's take a look at the, at the pattern of the recall, okay? As you can see, um, when you uh, 
shoot with ash without managing the recoil is going upright. So to counter that, the only thing you have to do is when you start shooting, you pull your mouse down at the left like that. You're gonna counter this uh, this pattern. So uh, let's give it a try, okay? Let's aim and when we start shooting, we go bottom left, okay? As you can see, when you're an Ash main and you have a good recur recall uh, management, well, you you're gonna be unstoppable because your hitbox is not existent anyway, so. If you just want to run in with Ash, and if you have a good aim, well, you're just gonna kill everyone. Bye bye. E easy peasy. Demon squeezy, you know? So let's do it one more time. You aim. As you start shooting, you aim uh, bottom left. And the uh, recall is inexistent. If you can manage it correctly. So we started from that to this little thing right there. For example, if this is the head of someone, well, you're gonna shoot him at least at least one time. And you're gonna get the kill. So this is how uh, you manage a recoil. Thank you everyone so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Even if you're not a beginner, I, I hope you liked it and I hope that I could help you. And well, if you're a beginner, I hope... Uh, this is gonna help you to get better at the game. By the way, I didn't upload a, a lot uh, lately because my sleep schedule is literally fucked. It is fucked. I'm telling you. I'm going to sleep at like 5 a.m. and I'm waking up at like eh, 3 p.m. Something like that. So yeah, it, it is fucked. I don't... I'm trying to fix it, but it's, it's not working. And now I can't upload because of that, because... When I wake up, I'm still tired. I, I don't understand anymore. So, yeah. Sorry for not uploading that much. I'm trying to fix that currently. So, yeah. I hope you enjoy and uh, have a great day.